So, smoking kills. Don't worry, I was about to go into a PSA. I'm gonna go out of our safety zone a little bit. And we're gonna try making Charkov in a cafe chrome tin. Now, we're gonna say the usual arguments of why is that so difficult. I'm a little bit intimidated by this, if I'm being completely honest, because I've never made Charkov outside of an Altoids tin. Which, if we compare to the thickness of this tin, yeah, that's going to be a little bit limiting, but let's give it a go. All right, we're going to be using cotton bandana for this. As you can see from the uh, rather tatty edge, I've already made chalk off with this before, and uh, as usual, I still can't find a pair of scissors, so I'm going to use my knife. Now, I must apologise for the bad angle, but one of the things when I review footage I do for this channel is I do have an awkward habit of leaning forward towards the camera and exposing a bit too much cleavage, which uh, has meant quite a few interesting shots have ended up on the cutting room floor. So we're going to try and basically get the same kind of squares I always go for, which roughly inch by inch or so. It's not anything but too accurate, but I don't want microscopic bits of chunk off because the more surface area I've got, there's more opportunity for that heat to get in there. Whereas, again, I don't want large ones because I don't want to make a tin full of just one bit of charcoal. Because I'm only one fire. But yeah. Do the general rules of cutting anything with a knife. Cut away from yourself. And if you're going to do something like this where you've got to poke through, just hold it nice and taut, push through. As you can see there, we've got a fold. We're just going to cut towards the edge, so apply tension. Cut across. Simple as that. Again, this would be easier if I could find where my scissors were. I need you my knife went through that bit as well. But you get the idea. You don't want to spend 10 minutes watching me, or more importantly, my crotch, cutting bits of cloth. But it just shows you, the last time I used t-shirt material, um, got quite a bit of mileage at that t-shirt actually. It was an extra, extra, extra large uh, American Appeal t-shirt in bright orange. Bright orange because then I used the left of the material as a signaling device. I collect it at roughly neckerchief size, so I've got quite a bit of fur material. But every single survival list you've ever seen always talks about cotton bandanas. So let's try making some out of bandanas. Another quick technique to show you, we're cutting with a knife. If you get a piece of material, fold it over your blade, pinch it at the back and just pull through. Nice and easy. Probably a little bit safer than what I was doing already. Give it a minute to get established.
So in part one of this video, I really heavily edited the amount of time it takes to make charcoal. Off. In this one, I tried to do more of a one cut so you could see just how long it takes. And obviously I've not shown you how to put the hole in the tin. And if it's not a completely airtight container, you don't need to. I find it useful as something to visualize on because although I refer to it as gas, what we're really looking for is smoke. A smoke coming out of a small hole is much easier to focus on than just the thick pouring out all the edges of the tin. So in this sort of clip, I try to show you just how long it takes. And although there's not a timer on screen or anything like that, it gives you an idea of the you know, three or four minutes it takes to get a tin of charcoal off completed. kills unless it's about to save your life so give you that minute to cool down we'll check it out right 
in a few minutes. Let's have a gander, shall we? Precariously move that out of the way. And while I was waiting for it to cool down, you'll all be glad to know I was busy chopping up the rest of that bandana. So I don't have to ever do it again. So, yep, cool to the touch. Let's have a gander. Apart from the furry bits on the edges, that looks like shark off to me. And if I just stuck to the top of the thing. Ah, top top one stuck to it, but the rest of it's okay. So that's interesting. The top piece of shark off seemed to get stuck to the paper on the uh, Figgy bob. Figgy bob? The tin. It'll definitely turn into uh, carbon. So we've already looked at how to light chalk off using a ferro rod. Well, why don't we go a bit more native and go for flint and steel. Now, I'm not very good at flint and steel, I will fully admit, as I chalk off. But I shall give it a go. Um, also, good research. Try looking at the Mon scale. It's a scientific scale of uh, material hardness based on each other, and that's why flint and steel works. Because the rocks or minerals that we use with flint and steel is harder than our high carbon steel, which is how they create sparks. I like using the sun. So we got charcoal. Got a standard pair of reading glasses, and as you can see, it's probably not best to this nine o'clock in the morning. I can get a relatively tight ring, but it's just not enough to ignite charcoal. Now on the other hand. This really cheap compass with magnifying on the end, that gets a very fine beam. And that is enough to ignite charcoal off. So I was right to think that didn't show up on camera very well, so we're going to try again. Move the camera close to the wall. I'm going to use this gigantic Fisnel lens. We're still going to be using the same charcoal and the same tin. I just want to be able to display it a bit better than that compass could. And as you can see, 
focal point for this thing because it lets so many photons through it goes really really quite fine indeed although the compass did work it didn't show up very well on camera so this is actually the first time I've ever, ever used this but look how fine that goes and it's almost instantaneous the amount of heat that's getting focused down onto that charcoal in fact it even erupts into flame right now which takes me completely by surprise I've never had solar magnification do that before so yeah I am having to record this afterwards unfortunately there was quite a lot of background noise at the time and I got a couple of complaints that uh, I couldn't filter it out with any kind of audio software but anyway I'm just trying to ignite a few more pieces the tin gets a bit hot to handle got a couple of complaints about lack of fire safety lack of fire flame proof gloves and no fire extinguisher being visible but maybe that's something we'll improve on in later videos so that's me just getting a few more different areas focused because obviously this cough has been through about three or four times of doing this now and if I just blow on it to put some oxygen on you can see just how many embers we've got going on there so there we go on top of the ferro we've already done we've now ignited charcoal for flint and steel and also solar but there's still quite a few different ways we can ignite charcoal stay tuned for the rest of this video series to find out how so thank you for watching Newbie's Guide to Charcloth Part 2. Keep an eye for Part 3. And so please like and share the video. If you really enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really, really enjoyed it, consider hunting me down on Patreon. I'm on there and any funding for the channel is always vastly appreciated. So, as ever, get out there and do the impossible every day.